Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This will be a layout update for April 2021. Let's take a look at what's new on the layout and we'll start with this new locomotive right here. So for the first time in over a year I stopped in at my local hobby shop which is in Calgary, Alberta. It's called Hobby Tech. I had gone in just to grab some scenery stuff and a couple decoders. I just happened to come across one of these older run Dash 8 40 CWs in CN XIC paint. I've been looking for one of these for a long time and they were always so hard to find and it, it's funny, you know, years later you just come across one and the cellophane was still on the uh, the inside packaging so pretty cool. Just So the old Atlas packaging. Factory equipped with lock sound. And if you open it up, this is the the master line atlas, and the SKU number is CNIC2455. So on the other side it's got one of the replaced AC panels, I think it is. I'll flip it around so we can take a look at it. But of course these ones, since being XIC, they've still got the flashing ditch lights, which is really cool. I did end up taking the shell off as soon as I got it because when I put it on the tracks the engineer's side ditch light was so dim you couldn't see it and I could see light was shining out under the steps. One of the SMD LEDs had come out of the uh, ditch light hole and was just like shining down the truck. So I fixed that. I tightened up some of the wiring in the back because it's, it's kind of, it's got something vibrating in the radiator. I still haven't tracked it down yet. I also replaced the stock Atlas couplers with some KD-158s because the ones that these Atlas, older Atlas come with are just brutal. It has a very prototypical CN feature there that they replaced one of the panels with just something they grabbed off of something else that had primer on it or from a different locomotive. Very common to see on CN. Sometimes you'll see them uh, swap doors on the engine on the long hood and you'll get some real random kind of colors. And So I like that about this one. I will end up, you know, one day I'll get to weathering this thing and I'd like it to be, you know, just real grimy kind of like post 2010 kind of era and these things were always just filthy so that's what I'll be doing. I like that these uh, Atlas Masterline come with the chain on the uh, on the rear truck for the handbrake. I took four links out of it, it was almost touching the ground um, so, so I cut four links off of it and reinstalled it and it's still pretty loose so I might take a few more off just to get it so it's not dangling down so far. But other than that, really cool locomotive, can't wait to put some miles on this thing. So in addition to finding the uh, older run Dash 8 there, I also found one of these really old Rapido Trains Super Continental Line Baggage Express cars in Via Paint. It says 9637. It's in the used section of the other hobby shop there in Calgary. Pretty good deal on it. These are really old. Like a, From what I can tell online, these came out in like 2008. Someone had been commenting on my Via Pasture Train that I didn't have a baggage car. And then somewhat serendipitously, I came across this one. Just There were no other passenger cars in the store. It's just this one sitting there, and I thought, perfect. Even though it's blue and yellow, it'll work well with my 1980s train. And it can be swapped out with the stainless steel ones once Rapido releases those. So pretty cool find, though, finding one of these ancient baggage express cars. So it'll need a little bit of work to probably get it to run with my 1980s Canadian there. I found usually I have to put one long shank coupler in, and it did come with a couple long shanks. It's funny, it, it had uh, a set of batteries, like button batteries, in the box. I think the lighting, if it has lighting, was powered by these button batteries. And they're like, they've been sitting in the box so long, they've just corroded and turned into like a, a little bag full of acid. So I'm looking forward to adding that with our 1980s Via Rail Canadian. And one other thing that caught my eye was in the hobby shop, and I don't usually buy too many vehicles because my layout really doesn't have a lot of space for cars and trucks and stuff. Like they've only got, you know, two feet of road in the one parking lot here at Banff. But I really like this kind of modern, I think it's like a sprinter type van. And these are made by, they're made by Bush, but they're actually Walther's Scene Master. So they must have come out pretty recently. I thought that looked pretty cool and it could have been dropping stuff off at the station which also doubled as the bus stop in Banff for a lot of years so pretty cool little uh, additional modern vehicle for the layout. So as far as progress on the layout over here at Mount Norquay Road I got these two 
signals planted here on the on the one side going into town what I do is I, I drill a hole and then I use a like a drink straw and I glue that in there so that the wires are easy to thread through of course this one here is right on a joist underneath so I had to kind of get creative with my vibe saw and remove a portion of one of the joists so that there's some clearance because of course you know you need to mount some way of mechanically lifting and closing the gates so I got those two done I actually got the hole drilled for the other one you can see it laying in the background there and that one's ready to install as well and then I realized my plan originally for mounting a tortoise directly underneath it not the greatest idea and there's better products out there a friend of mine pointed out that I should try the uh, tortoise gate slash semaphore actuator and it's made by circuitron so it's this guy here so I ordered one of those to try that out. It's almost like a cable drive that attaches to the uh, to the Taurus motor, and it makes it so that one motor could drive both gates, which is I like that. And they'll kind of work together. The final thing I've been working on is actually the Banff station. I kind of started going on that again. We had made a trip to Banff there a couple weeks ago, and I got a few more pictures, kind of what I needed to finish some of the photoshopping. So I've started working on that, and I've actually hauled it all upstairs on a big mat because it's just easier to work on in the kitchen table where there's lots of light and near my computer and stuff. So let's hop upstairs and I'll show you where I'm at with the BAMP station walls. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. It's going to pretend that that didn't happen last night. So here's our kitchen table that's been taken over by me to work on getting these printed sides done for the BAMP station. So this is the railway west end of the station that I'm working on. The platform and tracks are on uh, this side here. It doesn't look like much when you look at it from this angle. Pretty underwhelming. But if we go down to track level and we spin it around here, it'll show you the, the transformation is pretty impressive. So that same west wall, this is what it looks like from dead on. So I'm on the second print right now that I've done and this one's pretty much there. The only thing is that this is a more modern picture and the station I want to model had this red sign here at the back that said Banff. So I've gone ahead and I, I just missed it on this one but one of my, the next print that I do will have that accurate one. So it helps to just continue to test these things and here's kind of looking down. Keep in mind these are just roughly put together. I'm happy with the way these ones turned out as well. These ones are looking pretty good. This is definitely the most difficult building that I've done to date and the problem with it is that it's so huge and it's really difficult to get pictures, broadside pictures that you need to do this type of building modeling and get it all in one frame and actually get a quality photo. Obviously this is just two dimensional but it looks like the station awning is there because of that huge shadow that it's casting. So. When I go and build the roof, eventually the you know the on the real awning will come down to about the same level there, and it'll hide that, and then the real awning will come out, and hopefully the shadow will match sort of roughly, so it doesn't look weird to your eye, and hopefully the, the lights on the layout don't throw it off either. But it's it's kind of like something that you only find out once you actually build it and install it. So this is the first step: is just getting these these 2D images correct and then I'll just keep trial and error until I finish it. There's just a different three quarter view. So this this wall is done. This one goes all the way to the operator station which starts right here and that kind of protrudes out um, in an octagonal shape from this uh, just this flat wall here. I'm really happy with the way this one turned out though. I like how it's got you can see like this AC or HVAC or whatever it is. It's lit but everything else is shaded by that big station awning. And the way the sun was lit when I took these photos, um, just the railway west end, where which is kind of true south, is lit here. So it's coming along, and uh, they don't have to be perfect, but they got to be somewhat close. And I'm kind of struggling on the, uh, I'll show you the operator station here next. So this is still there to this day, and I've just modeled it out of styrene and using the original plans that I have to get the dimensions. And this is my first attempt, and you can see it's not 
something doesn't look right. So there's there's a lot of things wrong with this one. And I, this is going to be a real challenge to get this right because so where this piece is, of the station sits is right here at the end of this first wall. And it sticks out so the sunlight actually lights up a lot of this wall because it's sitting further ahead under the awning. And that causes all kinds of problems. And I thought that I could just take a photo looking at this wall and looking at this wall and looking at this wall and then just kind of stitch them together. But it's just, there's too much variation in the lighting. And you can see this looks pretty good. And the stones have a lot of contrast because the light's coming from this angle. But then when you look at it like this, you can see I've got lots of problems here with my scaling. This one's too big. The rock wall doesn't line up. And not only that, but the colors are way different. Even though the shadow, you can see it's kind of lining up there. And that is how it was looking. But because I took the photos from different places, it's just completely different. So I'm going to try a few different things. First thing I'm going to do is just try the 2D version and wrapping the whole thing like that and not worrying about the trying to get the windows dead on. I like how this one looks. So like this would be looking down the, the length of the station and this looks really good I think. You even got that uh, one of those decorative station supports even looks good. So I'm happy with that but I'm not happy how it all looks together and I'll have to get that dialed in. So that's one of the challenges. And then the next challenge with this, like I was saying, how big the station is. You can see how much longer it is because the station ends up being almost four feet long. So this is on balsa wood because you can't, I couldn't even get styrene at the hobby shop long enough. And I had to print this in two sections because my printer can only do 17 inch pieces at the most. So there's, I like, the color worked out pretty good. And what I did was I kind of went along and photoshopped of course there were snow drifts when I took my picture. And this this is okay, but there still needs a lot of work. So I've got a bunch of notes on how I can improve this one too. So second print, it's it's not bad. It's gonna it's gonna take some time. That's the longest wall I have to deal with on the whole thing. So take the ten thousand foot view over the station here again so you can see how big that piece is. And these are what my prints look like when I'm working on them. So the workflow for this is to get actual drawings or something that you can use to get accurate measurements, scale them down to HO scale, so that's these these measurements here. Then you go and make your physical pieces using those scales. Then you measure your physical pieces because they don't always end up perfect. You know, like, you know, there's always some variation. So measure your pieces that you made using your drawings. And then I go and make the artwork to put on those pieces that will fit exactly what I have made. And you can see here I've got a couple different options. So this is the south end with the old sign on it so that's around 2010 and then the one I used is one of my newer ones if you can get it right the shadows are really convincing and it makes it look like hyper realistic in my opinion so especially this one right here like this is the perfect photo to work with that will look awesome on two dimensions so that's where I'm at uh, with these and another reason why I'm up here is because my wife does a lot of quilting and she's got these big quilting mats and big quilting rulers and I found a tool that she uses all the time it's a rotary cutter and that works awesome for doing really long straight lines much better than the hobby knife so that's another reason to work up here as well as having really good light a set of calipers too to help scaling stuff and then my computers nearby so I can make changes and you can see I've got a bunch of my notes written here so this one's too skinny make it the same width as this side align the operator station, make the ground visible on this wall, knock down the brightness. So there's a, there's a lot going on. Some photoshopping and some just creating artwork. A lot of things that go into trying to get these realistic looking station walls. So that's going to wrap up this layout update video guys. As always, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.